Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Uh, Father, we thank you for this Easter morning, and we thank you for the good news that you have for us, Lord. And mm-hmm. we just pray now that you would use Pastor Izzy to speak to each one of us, to encourage us through your word. We thank you for your son, Jesus, and we ask that uh, all God's people who greeted me said, Amen. Amen. Well, Aaron, uh, inform me a little quick note of news to start off the sermon that Christ is not risen, and, uh, and then he told me it's April Fool's. So he is risen, right? Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. So that, that's the, the only time I'd ever say that is because there is no way you're going to hear me say Christ is not risen. He is risen. And because of that, we give great, great rejoicing today. And guys, we're celebrating today the, the, really the, what we call in the big picture of Scripture, the fulfillment of God's promise. From the very beginning... All the way from Adam, in the, in, in, when Adam and Eve are created and put in the garden, they walked with God in fellowship, it says, until, until the, the serpent deceived Eve. And then she got her husband and they partook, remember, of the, that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God said, you know, when, when God came to them, and he said, Adam, where are you? And not like he didn't know where he was, but he said, well, we, we're hiding. You know, we hit, you know, why are you hiding? You remember Adam? What was Adam's response? Because because we're naked and and you know, and we're ashamed. But didn't it say before that that God created them and placed them in the garden, and they were both naked and they were well, at the end of Genesis two they were not ashamed until sin came. There wasn't that shame. It was the sin that brought that shame, and God said. You know, what have you done? And oh, oh it was the woman, the, the first right away, you know, projection. He wouldn't stand up for his own. It was, she did it. And then she goes, no, it was the serpent, right? And they all, they all passed the buck. And, and, and we read in, the, in Genesis that the Lord kicked them out of the garden and stationed an angel there with a flaming sword that they would not enter again, lest they would go and eat of the tree of life. And God said, I, I have to fix this. And from that, during the curse, to the, there was a curse pronounced for their sin. God said, Adam, because you've sinned, you're going to now have to work by the sweat of your brow to till the land, and there will be thorns and thistles. Can you imagine? Weeds. There, there were, can you imagine being in a perfect garden made by God? No thorns, no thistles. I mean, you're with the most perfect woman you could be with, for, for us guys, imagine this. Girls, you picture you're with the, with the perfect man made by God. You're put in this garden, and you're given one commandment, and you blow it. What was the commandment? Anyway, does anyone, just to sidetrack here, it's a really tough one. Be fruitful and multiply. That's really uptight of God. You know, put you both naked in a garden and say, be fruitful and multiply. I think, Adam, you blew it. Buddy, you blew it big time. And he got kicked out, but, but. When the Lord pronounced the curse on Adam, he would not have to work by the sweat of his brow and till the ground. And it wasn't going to be easy for him anymore. And to the woman, he said, you're going to have a curse too. You're going to have pain in your childbirth. And he says, and, but, but, oh, the but, this is a good one. But, through, through the birth of these, these, these ones, through the, 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 will come the seed, not seeds, plural, the seed. And what was he talking about? The seed. What was he? The Messiah. The one that would redeem and bring you back. Bring mankind back into fellowship with God. They were, the fellowship was getting broken. They were getting kicked. They used to walk with God in this garden. Now, anyone would volunteer if we could, you know, have a little visit to the Garden of Eden. Who would go with me? Clothing optional. Some of you are going, no, I ain't doing it. You know, we, we, we go and we're gonna and we're gonna be with the Lord. Now I I don't know about you, but this, guys, this is what we were created for: is to be in fellowship with God. 
from the beginning in the very first chapters of your Bible in Genesis, by the way, Genesis means the beginnings, the very beginning, that's what it translates to, God created man, he created the world, he created all that's within it, and he made us to be in fellowship with him. But sin entered the picture. And it broke that fellowship and it booted us out of that garden as, a, as mankind. And because of Adam, we read this in the book of Romans, because of one man's sin, sin was passed on to all men. It's like, a, it's like passing on a genetic trait. Once you have it, you know, you, you don't determine whether it goes, it just goes through your genes. It went down line to, to, from Adam and Eve through to all mankind. And God said, I got to fix that. So to fix it, I need to put in a new gene into the gene pool. It won't be from man. Mary will be made to be with child, not by, by man, but by the Holy Spirit overshadowing her. The Holy Ghost of God would, would create his seed to be born into this earth. And Jesus, Paul refers to him in Romans as the second Adam. The second Adam's different than the first. We're going to see that today. The second Adam is going to bring life to, the, to, to a world that is spiritually in death. The first Adam was born as a living soul. God breathed life into his nostrils. It said he formed him out of the dust of the earth. And whew, ha, in Hebrew, ha, which in Hawaiian they use the same breath of life. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and brought him to life. And light, as we'll see in Romans in a few minutes, Adam will become a living soul. But when he sins, what's the wages of sin? Death. And today we celebrate the reversal of that death in Christ Jesus. And we're going to use, uh, we have four different gospels we could choose from to, to tell you this story of the of the resurrection day of our Lord. And, but today we're going to turn to John's gospel because John does something a little different than the other gospel writers. And I'd like to show it to you this morning. If you would look with me at John chapter 20 this morning. Now, in, just for a little reference, in Mark's gospel at the end of Mark, Mark says that the girls um, awoke in the morning on the third day to go to the tomb because they were hurried when they buried the Lord, you know, or laid him in, a, in the garden tomb. They, um, they wrapped him with the, with the spices, what, what Joseph of Arimathea and, and his, uh, 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 had, had brought and Nicodemus and they had put a hundred pounds of spice and, and cloth and wrapped the Lord's body for burial. But they didn't get to do all their preparations like they wanted. So they got the rest of the stuff to bring later. And they were going back three days, the third day, after the Sabbath, to, to finish. But the girl said, who's going to roll the, Mark says that they said, who's going to roll the stone away? It's a giant stone over this garden tomb, a tomb that no one had ever, ever used. And they were, they were, you know, concerned about this. And John doesn't bother going into those details. Mark tells us that. But, um, but John tells us that in, in verse 1 of John chapter 20, that on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark. And she saw that the stone was already taken away from the tomb. So she was one of the ones worrying how they're going to get the stone out of the way. And what, what happens? Just like us, we worry about so much stuff, but God already took care of it. We just don't know. You know, has this ever happened to you? You're worried about something, and then you get there, and you find out it was already done, and you're like, why was I worrying about that anyway? You know, the, the girls were all worried, and the Lord said, don't worry. Got it covered. But I like what John tells us. It says, she ran, and she came to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. Who can tell me who, who he's talking about? Himself. <laughs> this is John the Apostle telling us he's the other disciple whom Jesus... Now, could, could you write to someone and say, you're telling them a story and, you know, you tell them about your friend and then you... And, and you could you throw in, and the other disciple whom Jesus loved talking about yourself? Are you allowed to say that? Does, does the Lord love you? Yes. Yeah, so you could actually use this line. I mean, you could. John is using it. He's going... 
and the other disciple whom Jesus loved, the two, Peter, Peter and the other disciple, when they heard the word from, from Mary Magdalene, they ran to the tomb. Now it says, she told them, they've taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter and the other disciple went forth, and they were going to the tomb, and the two of them were running together. And the other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb first. You know how I know this is written by real men? Only a real man would mention who got there first. <laughs> Especially since the other disciple happens to be John and the other one is Peter. And there always was this thing between Peter. Did you ever notice Peter and John and James, the inner circle, always got to go on the special trips with Jesus up to the Mount of Transfiguration? They got to do all those special journeys, you know, little extra time, quality time with the Lord. But John is not about to let... Uh, you know, the story go untold, who was the faster runner? Now, Peter might have beat him off the boat and swam to shore after Christ rises before John gets there, but on the run, you know, he, he, he goes, Peter beat me in the swim, but I'm in a triathlon, you know, I'm beating him in the run, you know, I, I was there first. Just to, just to be clear. Now, some people say, you know, they, they overlook these details. This just shows me real men wrote this. Men are prideful. I don't care what you say. He says, oh, he's so humble. He's just saying, he's not even saying his name. He's just the disciple whom Jesus loved. Yeah. So humble. Yeah, except he threw in that part about outrunning Peter. <laughs> and stooping and looking in, verse 5 says, he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. John may have got there first, but he was a scaredy cat. You know, he didn't go in the tomb. He, he lied there He stood outside, and, and it says... And Simon Peter also came, following him. And he entered the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there. So it says that Simon Peter then came. And following him, he entered the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there. And the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, was not lying with the linen wrappings, but it was rolled up in a place by itself. No, it folded to the side. And it says, And the other disciple that had come to the tomb first, then he entered, and he saw, and he believed. For it says, verse 9, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that Christ must rise from the dead. They didn't actually understand this part of the, of the promise of God, that the Messiah had to come and die, but not just die. I mean, they actually, if you talk to Jews today, they actually believe in their prophetic scriptures that teach that there has to be a sacrifice, a God-given sacrifice for sin. So when John the Baptist declared, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, to the Jews, no problem. A guy, a Messiah that would come and die for the sins. The problem was they were oppressed by the Romans at that time. Remember your world history? And what were they looking for? A Messiah to die for sins or the other Messiah that was promised that says would deliver from the oppression of all the ungodly government and all of the, the things of this world. Which one would you choose if you could choose one? See, because there are scriptures, whether you realize it or not, the Old Testament teaches us about both of those details concerning the Messiah. The problem is the Jews perceive that those details describe two different messiahs. One to die as a sacrifice, one to come and rule and take away unrighteous kingdoms and set up God's kingdom on earth in righteousness and truth. They didn't factor in that one detail, the one that John says that even he and Peter didn't understand. And what was that? Look at verse 9. For as yet they didn't understand the scripture that says that he must rise again. He's got to rise from the dead. See, this way he can be the same Messiah, just coming twice. First time to be the sacrifice. And then what did Jesus say? Don't worry, guys. They were all troubled when he said, I'm going to go to my father's house and prepare a place for you. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. If I go prepare a place for you, I'll come again. And I'll receive you to myself that where I am, you may be also. The Lord is, the Lord is going, I want to have you come be with, anyone want to go be with the Lord? 
in paradise? I mean, are you talking upgrading, man? We are going to upgrade. I'm so grateful Aaron was sharing about his dad. No, I know his dad. His dad loves the Lord. And I know he's, he, could be, he could be stepping off of this planet any second. Because once this body dies, absent from, from the body, present what? With the Lord. That's our hope as believers. And it is a living hope, guys. That's not a false hope. That's not a, like, ooh, you know, like, that hope that really works. No, it works. Soon, as soon as you, as soon as you leave this body, your spirit leaves, you go to be with the Lord. Present with the Lord. You're right in His presence. It's going to be a glorious day. Super great day. You're going to be with the Lord. You can enjoy his presence, and you'll be in a glorified body. No more pain, no more suffering. Just be, and I know for Aaron's dad, he's suffered enough. I mean, he'd be like, yeah, upgrade. But if the Lord wants him to stay around here for a while, then give him grace, you know. And, and I'm thankful for this hope we have as believers. Now, they didn't, they didn't understand this. I want you to, 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 to have a little bit of, I mean, so, some of you can have patience that they were the early apostles. They didn't know this stuff yet because it just happened. But, you know, some of you give cut more slack for these guys in the Bible than you do for your own family members or your co-workers that don't yet understand that Christ must rise. You're like, what's their problem? We all know this. It's been in the Bible for years. Everybody knows. How many of you know Christ is risen? Look at this. I started the service. Christ is risen. You said, he's risen indeed. Hallelujah. So, you know he's already risen. Did they understand that? No. The day it's going down, they don't get it. Just so you know, this is new news. This is like, this doesn't happen every day. This hasn't happened before. There was one guy before this that was raised from the dead, and Jesus is the one who did it, and we just studied about him last week, Lazarus. And they wanted to kill him too. The chief priest did. Because many people were going away and believing in Jesus because Jesus had the power. Jesus had to show the power to raise from the dead. Now, Jesus rises from the dead and it's the morning it happened. And they don't get it. Mary comes. Well, you read in, you read in Matthew's go gospel when she shows up that it says that the girls seem to be speaking nonsense to the disciples. We've seen him. He's risen from the dead. And they're going, uh, yeah, right. Girls, you like, maybe you, have, you got up too early and, you know, I don't know, wishful thinking. You know, they, they actually didn't believe. They didn't understand the resurrection from the dead. But this is the very pivotal point of Christianity. If Christ is not risen, well, Paul says we are most to be pitied. Yeah. There'd be foolishness for us to be even sitting out here if Christ is not risen. But Christ is risen. So it says the disciples went away again to their homes. But Mary, Mary stayed. And some of you know this is one of my favorite parts of the story. Mary stays. And she's outside the tomb weeping. And so as she wept, it says she stooped in and looked in the tomb. Guess what she got to see? I, I like this part. The, the other guys got to see the, the cloth laying there, right, that he was wrapped in. And the head cloth was where? Over by a, a, a place by itself, folded up over here. By the way, for those of you guys that have heard of the Shroud of Turin, the, 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 they say this is the, the very shroud Jesus was buried in, and we have his DNA now proof because of, that's baloney. You know how I know that? Because I have an eyewitness, two of them. And now a third eyewitness, Mary, three eyewitnesses that were there that morning. And what did they testify? They testified that the head wrapping is folded in a place by itself away from the, away from the rest of the wrappings. Anyone can tell me what the Shroud of Turin looks like? Have you seen the images of that? Yeah. It's a full mummified wrapping. Does it have the headpiece off to the side? No, it's complete with the whole body. What would be the problem with that being congruent with the scripture? The headpiece is over there. There is no way that is the, the burial cloth of Jesus. 
I'm just, and then people say, how can you be so confident? Well, because this thing's called the Holy Scriptures. And they testify from guys who were there. You want me to believe the guys in here today, 2,000 years later, that they are so-called experts about this thing? Or believe a guy who was actually there and saw it firsthand? What would you use in a court of law? First-hand witness or an expert? You know how those experts get hired and brought in, right? Who are you going to believe? Let's be honest. Go with the, ex the, the expert, right? No, April Fool's. Go with the eyewitness. These guys were there, and they said his headpiece was over there, folded up by itself neatly. And Mary comes. Now listen to this. Mary stoops, and she looks in, and she sees two angels. They didn't say the other guys got to see the two angels. One was seated at the, at the head, one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lying. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Would anyone here like to have a conversation with two angels? On Resurrection Sunday? She does. She gets to have it. Listen to this. She says to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now what's her understanding? Does she understand he's risen? No, she thinks he's, what? Someone stole him. It's a pretty good Houdini stealing job, because somehow they got his body out of the wrappings with just undoing the head and slipped him out. I don't know. Left the wrappings all in a you know nice little wound up thing and headpiece over here. Maybe they just undid the headpiece and then grabbed him and slid him out. And she's going, I don't know where they took his body. And when she had said this, verse 14, John tells us that she turned around and she saw, it says, Jesus standing there. But she did not know it was Jesus. Her mascara was in her eyes or something, and she was crying. And No, I don't know. She, but she's, Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Now, how many believe Mary would have taken the body of Jesus? If you, I, was, I believe fully she was like, Man, if you just tell me where you took his body... I promise I'll come get, I'll carry him myself. And Jesus said to her one word. Do you see what it is? Her name. Mary. He speaks her name. As soon as he says her name. You know when, 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 when somebody who knows you speaks the, your name? Some of you know this just because just maybe the way your, your parents said your name or called you. You know, my nonna used to call me Serino. That means, um, I can't really, it's a, it's a, it's a slang in Italian, in, in Sicilian. I'm not going to tell you. It, it just, when she said it, I knew she was calling me. Nobody else used that name to call me. Just my nonna. So when she said it, I knew who was speaking right away. I didn't even have to look. No one else used that. Just her. All Jesus had to do was say Mary. He spoke her name, and all of a sudden, listen to this, she turned around, and she said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means um, great teacher. You know, teacher, you're here, great teacher. And Jesus said to her, stop clinging to me. I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my father and to your father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and, and that he had said these things to her. She went and told them the whole thing. I saw him. He said he hasn't ascended yet, but he's going to ascend. And I ascend and, 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 and to my God and to your God and, and to my father and to your father. He's risen. Well, if you look over at Matthew and it's, these words appeared as nonsense. Sad to read some of the other writers of the Gospels because they didn't understand what? The resurrection from the dead yet. They didn't factor this in. See, they thought Jesus was a great healer. And he even had power to raise Lazarus. But they didn't perceive that he was going to raise. Even though he told them. 
Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.